Police are trying to identify skeletal remains found in the Ohio River. It happened near Warner Road in Aberdeen. Nine on your side's Kristen Swilly is breaking down what police know so far. Kristen. Yeah, good evening, Tanya. Right now, police do not know if these bones were human or if they may belong to more than one person. They tell us this all started last month when they got a call from a commercial fisherman who said that he saw a car in the water here. And now they are, of course, looking for trying to figure out who this person may have been. If, in fact, these are human remains, they also recovered a truck from inside the water here as well. Now they do expect to be out here tomorrow morning, potentially with the FBI gathering more information, potentially looking for some other cars that they think may be down there. Again, no reason at this point to believe there are any more remains in the water. But Police Chief David Benjamin says the coroner has the remains at this point. His agency in Brown County are investigating and working to determine if, if there is any foul play. We would hope that everybody would kind of leave the river alone so that if there is any more evidence that we could recover if there are other vehicles in there that maybe we can recover those and they'll be intact and we don't lose any evidentiary. Now, of course, this happened. This call came in last month, as I just said. Task Force One's dive team was scheduled to do regularly scheduled training today, and that is why they waited at this point. They don't have any missing vehicles or any missing people here in Aberdeen at this point, so there was no reason for them to believe that this was urgent. So that's why they waited the full month for someone to come out here, do the investigation, do their training, and uh, that's when the discovery was made. Reporting live, Kristen Swilly, 9 on your side. All right, Kristen, thanks for that. Some other other headlines now. This was the scene right here on Erie Avenue in Hyde Park this afternoon. Police say the driver of the blue car smashed into parked cars, sending multiple people to the hospital. This happened on that curve between Delta and Marburg, right where the police station is. Officers say the driver was overdosing when the crash happened. Witnesses say they heard what sounded like a loud explosion. People yelling, a lot of commotion and uh just with the street, there's a lot of activity here, especially people driving really fast. And, uh, you know, the worst was true. And police say the driver caused another crash on Madison Road, not far away from this Erie Road crash. Erie Avenue, I should say. So take a look at this picture behind me. This is about 100 grams of marijuana. And if you are caught with this much pot in the city of Cincinnati, you will not face criminal charges in about a month from now. It's all because of an ordinance passed today by council. Nine on your side's Palacero explains why some have concerns about the new rule. Up to 100 grams of marijuana. That's pretty high. That's a pretty high number. That's, that's a lot of marijuana. 100 seems like more than would be needed for personal use. So I'm maybe slightly concerned about trafficking and if that'll be easier to get away with. That's what the ordinance passed Wednesday morning says people of any age can carry within Cincinnati. I think city council passing the ordinance shows that they're keeping up with popular opinion of the city. Most people want to see marijuana decriminalized if not outright made legal. Council members Chris Smitherman, Greg Landsman, Jeff Pastor, Chris Seelbach and Wendell Young all voted in favor of the ordinance while council members Amy Murray, David Mann and Tamaya Denard were on the opposing side. Mann concerned about the ordinance having no age limit. I think we're making a big mistake. Something 39 year old William Bell of Cincinnati is worried about too. I don't like that. I don't think that's right. I've got two kids of my own and I wouldn't like them that have access to marijuana. Meanwhile, Denard said she can't vote yes on decriminalizing marijuana until there's a more clear path on expungement for those who have already been punished previously. That's something 25 year old Reed Powers agrees with. A criminal record can make life extremely hard even after you served your sentence. And this type of ordinance I think should have been passed years ago. Going back and expunging those records makes sense. Pastor says this ordinance will also help the police department focus their efforts elsewhere. We've seen a scourge in crime and so you know we, we want our police officers to focus on those things that are a real threat to society. Marijuana is not a threat to our society. I think it's a good thing because now they can put the real criminals in jail and free up some space in the jails. That was Paolo Soro reporting. The new law will go into effect in 30 days. Nine on your side wants to hear from you on this story called the Feedback Friday Hotline, where you voice your opinion. It's 513-852-4998. Craig McKee will share your thoughts every Friday night at 6 o'clock. Turning now to our forecast, and meteorologist Rich Johnson is joining me now. He's tracking some storms in and around the tri-state, right, Rich? Oh, that's right, Tanya. Just a couple popped up, but it looks like the worst of the conditions are farther 
off to the east. As we have a look outside, you can see some of the rain showers now crossing from Kentucky into Ohio, across the Ohio River. This is from our Lytle cam here and can see a little bit of lower visibility as we look to the east here. So that's one of the showers making its way north. All right, here's the latest radar and you can see just a scattering of showers around the whole area. Farther to the east, though, that's where we have some heavier showers east of the tri-state, but notice occasional heavier showers popping up. A few of those now, there's been a rumble of thunder or two. Nothing severe, but just a couple of thunderstorms have now popped up across the tri-state. Well, as we look at temperatures around the region, it's cooling down a little due to the fact that we have some rain showers around. So where it's raining, we're getting some slightly cooler readings into the upper 60s. All right, as we look at this evening, temperatures dropping down from the upper 60s eventually by midnight down to the low 60s. Unless you get one of those heavier showers, then it will take a dive a little bit faster by two, three hours. All right, the forecast from this evening into tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be much different. The cold front moves by right around the um, morning rush. Winds will pick up out of the northwest 15 to 25. And I'll have a look at your seven day forecast coming up in just a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Rich. And don't do be sure to download the Storm Shield app to keep track of the forecast on the go. It sends you weather alerts based on your specific location. Download it. It's free on Apple and Android devices. An exciting day for Kroger today. The company broke ground on a new robot powered warehouse in Monroe. The company teaming up with a British online grocer called Okado for the $55 million facility. An Okado executive says the robots can fill a 50 item grocery order in less than six minutes. And once the order is filled, it will be given to Kroger stores driven over there or to smaller distribution hubs or directly to customer homes. I genuinely believe it will be a game changer for the industry and for the, the Kroger customer. The robots won't be alone. The factory will create 400 jobs. The facility is one of three planned robo warehouses. The other two will be in Florida and Virginia. The Monroe plant will open in spring of 2021. Well, gas prices are falling just before summer. A fluke or is it a sign of things to come? Experts give us their take in under three minutes. Plus a new threat for Dayton tornado victims. Coming up, why rescue crews are warning people to be extra cautious as the pick up of, they pick up the pieces. You're watching Nine on Your Side at 7. You're watching Nine on Your Side at 7. People in Dayton have enough to worry about as they continue to clean up from those Memorial Day tornadoes. And now they're facing a different threat, con artists. Ohio Task Force One says scammers are pretending to be them. They are soliciting tornado victims for repair help or asking for donations to the task force. The task force says it would never ask the public for donations and they say do not support or advertise any repair contractors. They do not. We just don't want our name being used for, um, you know, inappropriate activity. Uh, you know, we're there to be, we're professionals that come in to do the job to help people in their time of need and rescue them from disaster so that they can get back to leading their normal lives. The task force urges you to call them and let them know if you get one of these scam calls. We have some good news for drivers. AAA says gas prices will likely fall below $2 a gallon. What? Before the end of the year. How about that? Prices at the pump are down about seven cents just in the past week and wholesale prices are falling even faster. It's thanks to booming U.S. oil production. Right now it's about $2.50 a gallon in Ohio and Kentucky. Indiana slightly more expensive. That's $2.66. Crayons to computers coming up on nine on your side at seven. How a local organization is making sure teachers have the tools they need to shape young minds. You're watching nine on your side at seven. In this week's Positively Cincinnati, a story on the special bond between one tri-state organization and local teachers. Crayons to Computers has helped teachers get their students the tools they need to succeed for a couple decades now. Anchor Kristen Hartman shows us how their support helps kids learn. What happens in a preschool classroom can make or break a kid's lifelong interest in learning. That's why I love this Positively Cincinnati. It's about one educator helping another get there for the love of the child. So try to write the number four. Go back to age four. Yay, I win! Now multiply you by a few and you have this. You ready? All right. 
And there you go. Managing the Charlie Brown like classroom, twirlers and all, is part of a day's work. I want to say, <laughs> you guys can't go into my shot. <laughs> For Lenata Wright. She wears a lot of hats. Janet Balterson is Lenata's mentor. She manages a children's center and is helping Lenata in the step up to quality star rating process. It always looks great to parents to know that their child could go to a center that's step up rated. It already shows them the level of quality. <laughs> It's why Lenata wants those stars for the rating on her slice of early childhood education at the Lindner YMCA. It takes a lot of stuff for any classroom, and stuff takes money. You couldn't yes. do it. Yes, we, we couldn't, no. Enter crayons to computers. The more that we can help kids to get a good start in life, the better off we will all be. Thanks to a generous community, the organization has a free store for teachers, a place where they can outfit their classrooms at no cost. Uh, I can use this car. But with her busy schedule. I'm program director, preschool teacher, after school teacher, um, administrator. Lenata had a hard time getting to the store to do her shopping. So her mentor emailed crayons to computers. The CEO there read us her note. My question is, am I allowed to go in her place to get the items she needs? I am registered for my center, but my visit would be for her center. Did you give up your own shopping time? For that, for that month, yes, but what a great reward. When I came for Lenata, I think they said it would have valued over $2,000. Wow. Yeah. And you it's gave amazing. that up so she could have it. Well worth it. <laughs> and it wasn't just supplies. It means a lot. Janet's shopping helped Lenata add a soft touch, plus reading and writing centers to her classroom. I don't have kids of my own, so they, they, they're like my own little, little kids. <laughs> Is that why you want them to have the best possible future? Yes, because I would want someone to want my child to have the best future. If this smile is a predictor, that future sure looks bright. The Crayons to Computers CEO said it best. The children in preschool classes across the region are everybody's children. And the people we just met walk that talk. If you have a positively Cincinnati idea, I'd love to hear it. Message me on Facebook at Kristen Hartman, WCPO. It's been around for forever and it's an awesome thing. And if you want to help Crayons to Computers, call the number on your screen. It's 513-482-3290. Look, turning now to the weather and Rich is here. And I'll tell you what, we just heard that rain pouring down on top of us. Yeah, you could tell it's coming down pretty good. Yeah. So we have some heavy showers around and even an occasional rumble of thunder now. Okay. Nothing serious at this point. So and we're really not expecting that. But That's of course, good. we'll keep an eye on it I though. I know you will. All right, let's uh, have a look and see what's going on outside. And yeah, here's our setup. We have a low pressure center across Wisconsin trailing a cold front through Illinois. Out ahead of it, we're getting the southwesterly wind flow. So we are finding moisture from the Gulf of Mexico coming right back up toward the Ohio Valley for us. So, Yes, the wet days have returned, at least for a little while. Looking outside, uh, do have the raindrops out on the sky cam, so you can tell what's happening. Most of the area is seeing scattered showers. Occasionally, there's a rumble of thunder. Satellite showing that we do have one area clouds, and what a difference uh, several hours make this morning. Beautiful blue skies, then we had those high cirrus clouds, and now we have the low clouds in the area. Farther to the west, we have this area low pressure. I think you can see this spin right here. It's quite a strong area of low pressure high in the atmosphere. That's going to track to the north of the tri-state area, but what it will do is really usher in some cooler air and some breezy conditions tomorrow. All right, as we look at the tri-state, you can see the uh, colors start to light up here. Lots of yellows and red indicating some heavier showers, and occasionally there's a rumble of thunder. Had some heavier showers out toward the eastern tier of the counties. A couple of hours ago, those are now outside of the tri-state, so this is what we're keeping our eyes on right now. All right, let's investigate a little bit more closely. We'll head down toward the southern tier, Owen County. You can see a heavier shower right up toward Grant. So occasional heavier showers. Again, I didn't see too much in the way of uh, lightning of being tracked there, but it's possible that these uh, could have a occasional rumble of thunder. Looking down towards Cincinnati and yeah, we are looking at heavy showers uh, really stretching from Hamilton all the way to our Claremont counties. Uh, some of these showers may also have thunder closer in looking at the city here. You can see west of town. Not so much going on. It's just to the east and just to the south that we have still some heavier showers. Actually, a little southeast is the heaviest of the rain. Temperature shaping up like this as we 
Look around the area, Morrow at uh, 68 degrees, starting to cool down a bit now. Mason at 72. Right here in Cincinnati, we have 69. So most of us now dropping down to the upper 60s with the rain showers all over the place.